नोटिशन बन सगत पैलदा टर्म बकल टर्म बकल टर्म बकल मध्य कि दोन वायर्स है वायर्स वायर्स मध्य एक सेंट्रल हॉलो पोर्शन है नॉर्मली तेज आउटर हा हेक्जावन आउटर पोर्शन है हेक्जावन हा जो मधला पोर्शन दिखता है हेचिंग के हाजे हेक्जावन आला है मधन कट के लिए तुम्हारा ठीक है मग य टर्म बकल मध्य कि हा जो आउटर पोर्शन है ये मैं स्पैनर कि जो होल है या होल मध्य टॉमी बार मी इन्सर्ट कर पोर्शन मैं रोटेट करू शो हा सेंट्रल पोर्शन कपलर हा सेंट्रल पोर्शन कपलर जो कपलर ठीक है टर्म बकल कपलर आता हा जो कपलर है तो कपलर ऐसी पलिक इंटरनल थ्रेड है दोनों एंड इंटरनल थ्रेड है इतना इत इंटरनल थ्रेड है आता का बाजुन एक वायर इन्सर्ट के एक बाजुन एक वायर इन्सर्ट के वायर जो इन्सर्ट के कशात बयर लक्सटर्नल थ्रेड है इतना दाखिल बयरला एक्सटर्नल थ्रेड मग हा वायर के दोन एंड कुछ तरी बाहर कनेक्ट के वायर के दोन एंड कुछ तरी बाहर कनेक्ट के आता समझा य वायर मधल जर मैं टेन्शन एडजस्ट कराए या वायर मधल जर टेन्शन एडजस्ट कराए तो क्या क्या पाजे मैं या दोन वायर एकमेक ओढ़ाला पाजे अशा जो ओढ़ा तो तिकन टेन्शन एडजस्ट होना जर समा टेन्शन कमी कराए तो हा दो वायर एकमेक लंब ग मग या कपलर या रोटेशन मध्य कपलर के एक रोटेशन मध्य जर समा हि वायर पुढ़े तो हि वायर मग जाना जर यती थ्रेड जर से एक तो राइट हैंडल कि एक तो लेफ्ट हैंडल पर समा मला मी जर या वायर वर थ्रेड ये राइट हैंडेड जर दुसर वायर वर के थ्रेड मी जर लेफ्ट हैंडेडले एक बाजू के थ्रेड राइट हैंडेड दुसर बाजू के थ्रेड मी जर लेफ्ट हैंडेडले तो क्या होते मी कपलर च एक रोटेशन कंप्लीट के एक बाजु हि वायर पुढ़े साइमल्टेनिअस हि वायर मगर न जता हे अपोजिट हैंड आयापन पुढ़े दोन वायर एकमेक जवर ये दोन वायर जर एकमेक जवर आया तर मग वायर मधल टेन्शन का होना बानो वाटना टेन्शन की वैल्यू क्या वाढ़ी आता समझा टेन्शन कमी कराए तो हा कपलर जो है तो क्या कराए हा अपोजिट डायरेक्शन में फिर अपोजिट डायरेक्शन में फिर हाथ दोन वायर एकमेक लंब जी दोन वायर जर एकमेक लंब ग टेन्शन ये क्या होगा बानो रिड्यूस हो मग या टर्म बकल मध्य आता टोटल किती इलेमेंट है संगा टर्म बकल मध्य हा से कपल जो हॉलो है या बाजूला एक वायर है या बाजूला एक वायर है फक्त वायर मध्य का इकड़ा जो वायर चाहता हैंड आल थ्रेड का जो हैंड आल हा समा राइट हैंडेड थ्रेड आल तो यह बाजू का वायर च थ्रेड हाला पाजे लेफ्ट हैंडेड आजे ओके आता मैं राइट हैंडेड लेफ्ट हैंडेड थ्रेड कन्सिडर के आता जर मैं राइट हैंडेड एंड लेफ्ट हैंडेड थ्रेड कन्सिडर के लिए जो सेंट्रल इतना जो होल है तो मैं हा दाखला है आता हे का जे डायमेन्शन है मैं कैसे दाखिल बी डायमेन्शन सगत पैलदा हा वायर मधल टेन्शन एडजस्ट करना है वायर मधल वायर मधल टेन्शन एडजस्ट करना दोन डायरेक्शन मैं टेन्साइल फोर्स एफ दाखला है वायर का डायमीटर वायर का डायमीटर मैं स्मॉल डी दाखला है त्यानंतर हा जो कपलर है यहाँ एन रन जिथे थ्रेड आतो नॉर्मल मन तो कपलर नट मन तो कपलर नट या कपलर नट ऐसी आउटर डायमीटर मैं कैपिटल डी घर कैपिटल डी आउटर डायमीटर इनर डायमीटर मैं स्मॉल डी घर आउटर डायमीटर कैपिटल डी इनर डायमीटर स्मॉल डी ओके आता वायर ऐसी आउटर कपलर ऐसी नट ऐसी इनर डायमीटर अजे क्या इत कपलर जो सेंटर मध्य गए तो हॉलो पोर्शन है त्या हॉलो पोर्शन का इनर डायमीटर मी मैं कैपिटल डी वन हॉलो पोर्शन का इनर डायमीटर कपलर कैपिटल डी वन आउटर जो है आउटर आउटर लगे बी इतना कैपिटल डी टू ठीक है आउटर जो मोजना तो कैपिटल डी टू ठीक है डी वन इट इज द इनर डायमीटर ऑफ हॉलो पोर्शन ऑफ कपलर एंड डी टू मे इज द आउटर डायमीटर ऑफ कपलर कपलर का इनर आउटर डायमीटर है आता मी कपलर ची इन इतपर्य टोटल लेंथ यल आई संगित कपलर की टोटल लेंथ का ले मी यल आता एक एडिशनल गोष्ट ये दाखिल ती मे का बी जी वायर है हा जो कपलर है ये इथुन इतपर्यंत कॉन्टैक्ट है बी हा कॉन्टैक्ट जो है तो थ्रेडेड पोर्शन का कॉन्टैक्ट है मजेज का वायर आ कपलर का थ्रेडेड पोर्शन का कॉन्टैक्ट मैं यल बन 
जेवड़ा या बाजूला कॉन्टैक्ट अल तेवड़ा या बाजूला पाजे नी एल वन ये एल वन इट इज द्रेडेड लेंथ कॉन्टैक्ट बिट्वीन कपलर एंड वायर थ्रेडेड लेंथ कॉन्टैक्ट बिट्वीन कपलर एंड वायर तो मैं एल वन ओके आता हे जे डायमेन्शन सगे हे सगे डायमेन्शन अपने डिटर्माइन कराए हे सगे डायमेन्शन मिला डिजाइन ऑफ टर्न बकल टर्न बकल यूज का इट इज यूज टू एडजस्ट द टेन्शन इन वायर आता है वायर च टेन्शन नॉर्मली तुम्हारा कुछ कुछ बढ़ाते एप्लिकेशन तुम्हारा कुछ कुछ बढ़ाई तो सगत महत्व जे एप्लिकेशन है तो मे जे ब्रिज ब्रिज या ब्रिज वरती मोटा मोटा वायर्स 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 मतलब टेन्शन एडजस्ट करना तुम्हारा हा टर्न बकल बढ़ा भरपूर ठिकाने ब्रिज मे ज्यादा वायर लगे ठीक है मोटा वायर्स एकदम वरती वर्टिकल कॉलम वायर्स न ब्रिज ना जॉइन के वायर्स मतलब टेन्शन एडजस्ट करना टर्न बकल यूज करते टायर रॉड्स टायर रोप्स ठीक है कि बेल्ट टेन्शन एडजस्ट करना सुधा टर्न बकल यूज करते आता या टर्न बकल च पैल्दा तुम्हारा वर्किंग एनिमेशन दाखो या टर्न बकल ऐसी वर्किंग एनिमेशन फिनट मी इक स्क्रीन शेयर करते तुम्हारा मैं एक यूट्यूब वीडियो प्ले कर दाखो टर्न बकल का ठीक है एक मिनट फिर दिया जर अस स्क्रीन रोटेट हो ना एक विजिबल सेंट्रल पोर्शन जो दिखते तुम्हारा ऑरेंज कलर का तो कपलर है बरबर है सेंट्रल पोर्शन जो दिखते तो कपलर है मजला हॉलो पोर्शन है होगा ठीक है तेज़ जब दोनों एंड बगीचे में दोनों एंड तब क्या दोनों एंड लग नोटेड होगा अन्य यहाँ बाजूला एक वायर है यहाँ बाजूला एक वायर है बरबर एक काय ब्लू कलर भी वायर लग गोले और दूसरे बाजूजी येलो कलर भी वायर � या दोनी वायर जब रोटेट हो जाए तब क्या वाला पहिये एक में का पसुन या सवर यह ला पहिये वो रोबर है हमें आता तुम्हारा ये प्ले को बता दो इंडिव्यूजल ही वायर रोटेट के लिए मगे गेली 
इंडिव्हिज्युअल ही वायर रोटेट केली पुढे मार्ग केली पण आपण काय करतो हा कपलर जो आहे तो कपलर रोटेट करतो आणि दोन वायर एकमेकांच्या जवळ किंवा दोन एक्सप्लेन हाऊ इट वर्क Here I have two turn buckles. One is assembled and one is disassembled so you can more easily see the parts. There's a body, two eye bolts and two lock nuts. As you can see, these eye bolts are welded shut. Eye bolts that are welded are optimal because they're stronger, allowing for higher weight loads. Not all turn buckles have eye bolts that are welded shut. Here I have a turn buckle with the eyes not welded. या वायरचं डायमीटर या वायरचं डायमीटर सेमच असणार फक्त हा राईट टर्न बकल्स ओळखत परत ओके म्हणजे कसं बेस्ट टर्न बकल्स हा आय टर्न बकल्स मग अदर टर्न बकल्स अनवॉल्ड आय स्पर्ट ओके म्हणजे कसं बेस्ट टर्न बकल्स हा आय टर्न बकल्स फेल अंडर अदर टर्न बकल्स अनवॉल्ड आय स्पर्ट ओके म्हणजे कसं बेस्ट टर्न बकल्स हा आय टर्न बकल्स फेल अंडर अदर टर्न बकल्स अनवॉल्ड आय स्पर्ट ओके म्हणजे कसं बेस्ट टर्न बकल्स हा आय टर्न बकल्स फेल अंडर अदर Because they have opposite threads, when the main body is turned, the eye bolts are being drawn in together and pushed away from each other. Let me show you what would happen if both sides had conventional threads. Here, I have a coupler nut and two conventional bolts. If I hold the bolt and turn the coupler nut, it simply moves the coupler nut up and down the bolts. Now that you have an understanding of what a turn buckle is and how it works, I'm going to show you how to install one. When installing a turnbuckle, you'll use a D-shackle on each end. As you perhaps guessed, this gets its name from the shape, since it looks like a capital D. The D-shackle has two parts, the body and the pin. The body has two holes, one that's unthreaded and one that's threaded. The pin goes through the unthreaded hole first and then threads into the second hole. You'll have an issue if you try and install it the other direction, as the threads that will thread, but you will hit stop. To begin, remove the pin from the D-shackle. Loop the D-shackle through the corner of the sail, making sure the shackle passes around both the D-ring and the wire rope. Take the turnbuckle and push it between both arms of the D-shackle. Then reinsert the pin. Once the D-ring is attached to the sail, it'll attach the D-ring to the other side. In this case, we'll be attaching to a pull tab. Once again, remove the pin from the pin shackle. Place the D-shackle through one of the holes on the pull tab. And then, insert the pin from the pin. And we insert the pin. The pin needs to be more than hand tight, so you'll need to use a wrench to tighten it. Use an adjustable wrench like this one to tighten the pins on the D-shackles. The pins need to be snug, but be careful not to over-tighten them. If you over-tighten, you run the risk of locking up the threads and the pin will be stuck. Once the turnbuckle is attached to both ends, you'll need to tighten it. To do this, use a wrench. Make sure that the wrench is large enough to cover both sides of the body of the turnbuckle. This wrench is too small. Notice how it doesn't fully grab both sides of the body. When tightening a turnbuckle, don't use the screwdriver inserted into the two halves of the body. This puts stress on the two halves of the body separately and can damage it. Both sides need to be turned in unison. At a minimum, you'll need to tighten the turn buckle until the threaded eyes extend into the body. Here, you can see the threads extend into the body. Sales work best when they're tight, so it's important to continue tightening the turn buckle even after the eye bolts have entered the body. It's normal to feel some resistance as the sail stretches. The turn buckles I've shown so far have not been greased, and that's to keep things a bit cleaner here in the studio. It's very important that your turn buckles are properly greased to prevent binding or seizing. Here's a turn buckle that's been greased using white lithium grease. We have a full video about greasing turn buckles. The link to that video can be found in the description below. Be sure to check that video out after you watch this video. After the turn buckle is fully tightened, you'll need to lock it in place by tightening the two lock nuts.
आपल्याला कोअर डायमीटर पाहिजे का आउटर डायमीटर पाहिजे आहे Use a wrench to hold the body in place. Outer by outer. Use a second wrench to tighten the lock nut. Outer again. This step is very important as it prevents the turn ball from backing off and becoming disconnected. If you need added security, you can use a length of non-gross wire. Loop the wire to the bottom of the turn buckle and the gear shaft. Then twist the wire. That's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. As always, for more information, visit attention.com. So you want to form an eye in your wire rope, or maybe even join two cables together using a lap splice. In this video, I'll teach you everything you should know to make that connection using wire rope clips. If you're having any trouble selecting the right clips for your application, please visit our website or watch the how to select wire rope clips video, which is linked in the description. A good foundation for installing these clips properly is knowing the terminology. The parts of the clip are the saddle, sometimes called the base or the body, the u bolt and the nuts. For the cable, you need to know the difference between the live end and the dead end. The live end of the cable is the longer portion of the cable that extends to the other connection point. It will be holding the load. The dead end is a shorter portion that is turned back just so the wire rope clips have something else to grab. When the clips are used to make an uh, eye or end on the cable, it is called a termination. And the entire group of components is called an assembly. Uh, Before you begin, get your tools and reference information together. You'll need a tape measure, seizing tape, cable cutters, a torque wrench, the proper size wire rope clips, and reference information. Reference information can be found on eRigging.com's website in our wire rope clip page. To start prepping the cable for assembly, cut off any unraveled pink portion of the cable. Before cutting, it is best to seize the cable with tape to make sure that the end is kept tight. For larger cables, soft wire may be a better choice to hold the cable when you get it. After you seize your cable, you'll need to measure and mark the turn back length. Turn back is the length of the cable from the base of the eye to the end of the dead end. First, measure and mark the turn back length, specified in your reference material. Next, determine how large the eye of your cable will be and mark the live end of the cable where the turn back mark is. Lastly, mark the live end or the dead end of the cable end. Line up your markings and apply the first clip to the assembly. Don't settle a dead horse is a common phrase to help people remember the proper orientation to apply the clip. It means to never apply the saddle of the clip to the dead end of the rope. Be sure to space it one saddle length from the end of the dead end. Tighten and torque the nuts, being sure they are clean, dry, and free from lubrication. Alternate between the nuts to ensure even pressure. The use of a torque wrench will help to achieve the recommended torque required for holding the load. Be careful not to over tighten the nuts as it can permanently kink the wire rope and lead to premature failure. Apply the second clip to the assembly remembering to put the saddle on the live end and push it snug up against the thimble. If you aren't using a thimble, push it up to the lines you marked earlier. Using a torque wrench, tighten the nuts, remembering to alternate between the nuts for even pressure. If your assembly requires three or more clips, space them evenly between the first two clips you applied, remembering never to saddle a dead horse and never to alternate the clip orientation. Begin tightening the remaining clips, starting with the clip closest to the dead end and working back to the eye. Remove any slack in the cable between the clips by pushing the slack to the eye 
as you work your way down, tightening all the clips in the termination. After tightening all the clips, it is important to do a first load on the assembly to see all the components. Load the assembly with the load equal or greater to the load you expect it to see in the and retorque all the clips. Now your wire will be is ready for service. After proper assembly, and wire rope clip termination can be expected to hold 80% of the break strength of the wire rope this is typically referred to as termination efficiency. Size is 1 inch through 3 and a half inch have a termination efficiency of 90%. For comparison, a suede sleeve termination has a termination efficiency of 90% to 96%. The benefit of using wire rope clips instead of suede sleeves for making a termination is their ability to be reused. There are some precautions you should take to ensure your wire rope clip is still fit for service. The first thing to check is to make sure the U bolt fits into the saddle with no force required. If it is too difficult to make these two components, your U bolt or saddle may be bent, and you should discard the clip. Check the threads on the U bolt to make sure they aren't damaged and that the nuts spread into them easily. Next, Inspect the feet and ridges on the saddle for damage or gouging. Lastly, when installing the clips, ensure they can accept the recommended torque. If you are using a fully assembled, add one more clip to the assembly and ensure to space the clips at least one saddle length apart from each other. The first clip near the pole should be one pulley diameter distance from the center of the pole. And achieve a 60 degree incline the size of vinyl coated cable and the wire rope clips that fit may be confusing as some manufacturers measure different things. At e-rigging, we list vinyl coated cable by the cable diameter. The coating adds some thickness, which is called the finish or final diameter, and is listed on our website's product pages. It typically coincides with the next size larger cable or clip. For example, 3 16 inch vinyl coated cable is coated to quarter inch diameter. So, after you strip the coating off the cable, it will still be 3 16 inch. So, you use a 3 16 inch clip. Stripping the vinyl coating from the cable and the area where the clips will be installed is recommended for maximum strength. To figure out just how much cable to strip, Measure and mark the cable and turn back just as you would the cable is uncoated. Where the end of the dead end meets the live end is where you'll want to start stripping. If you intend on not stripping the vinyl coating from your cable and apply the wire rope clips over the coating, know that the strength of your assembly will greatly reduce. And you should always test these types of connections before putting them into use. Never use this method for critical applications, as the working load limit is greatly reduced and unpredictable. To size the connection properly, Measure the outside diameter of the coated cable or look to the product specifications on E-Rating's website. If the coated or finished diameter is a quarter inch, use a quarter inch wire rope clip. The preferred method for splicing two cables together using wire rope clips is forming two interconnected eyes, but for less critical applications, a lap splice can be used. Overlap the two seized ends of the wire rope. 
about twice the amount of turn back the half portion in a half portion. eye termination. Using twice the number of clips required for a single eye termination, place the first clip one saddle length from the end of one of the dead ends, but the end ensuring portion you don't saddle a dead the horse. End 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 Tighten and torque that clip the to the end recommended end end value. Value. Work your way down the length of the cable, equally spacing and hand tightening the clips. Remove the slack in the line between the clips as you work your way down. Once you've used half the clips, reverse their orientation to saddle the wide end of the other portion of the rope. So, four scenario divided by area high enough. I buy four outer D square minus. First clip you installed. And you would have to torque my other three. One. The first assembly should look as shown. Yep. This process is even easier for fifth grip clips. Because saddle orientation doesn't matter. I left the other one. Their mirror design. Single and double stamped cable clips require a slightly different assembly procedure. First, make sure the cable's final diameter matches the clips you're using. Then, seize the end of the cable. Unscrew the nuts and remove the top clip. Place the cable into the body of the clip and work it into the grooves and around the holes leaving at least two cable diameters of dead end protruding from the body. Form the eye to the size you require and work the cable into the other side. Place the top plate onto the body to capture the cable and tighten the nuts by hand. Use a wrench for final tightening while alternating between nuts to ensure equal pressure. Your finished assembly should look as shown. For single stamped clips, use the same guidelines as you would for double stamped clips. To recap, the key points to consider when choosing wire rope clips for your rigging assembly are turn back length, torque values, number of clips required, clip size, and clip spacing. If you have any further questions, please feel free to contact us on our website. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more information. I'm Tyler with the Rigging. Thanks for watching. This video is brought to you by Sayerite. Visit Sayerite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. A wire hung canopy is a great idea. They can provide adjustable shade to make your outdoor living area comfortable, even on the hottest of sunny days. Want one for your outdoor living area? Watch this video tutorial and we'll show you how to sew it up and install it yourself. Almost all the materials and tools to do it can be found at Sayerite. Save some money and do it yourself with help from Sayerite. I'm Eric Grant from Sayerite and I'll be walking you through the process. First step, measuring your structure. Hi, I'm Eric Grant from Sayerite. And we're underneath the pergola that I built last year. But as you can see, there is a lot of direct sunlight. And it makes this environment not as enjoyable. So what we're going to do in this video is show you how to build a wire hung canopy. It's a canopy system that will retract and also cover this area so that the sun is not so intense. It's an easy project that you can do yourself following this video tutorial. So let's get started and show you how to build a wire hung okay. canopy. First off, we're going to take some measurements. We'll be using Sayerite's wire hung canopy calculator. Only two measurements are needed to determine how the wire hung canopy panels work on your structure. That's the structure's width and length. Here, we are measuring the structure's width. This is the area where we want the first and last panel of fabric to stop along the long edges of the panel. Notice it's up against the main beam of our structure, where the eye bolts will be screwed in. The second measurement is the length of the structure. This measurement will help us determine the length of each canopy panel. This measurement is from one main beam to the other main beam. Our structure is 143 inches in length. However, we need to take into consideration the length of each eye bolt. Each span will include two eye bolts. We need to subtract the eye's length from our length measurement. So our eye's length is 1.12. 
times 2, since we have two of them, equals 2.25. D1, D1. So we'll take the length Small measurement D1. and subtract Hi, area, calculate length, 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 and we'll enter Hi, area, that total length, length, into our length, calculator length, for the length measurement. Outer our structure's width is 162 inches, our length is 140.75 inches, and we will pick a 54 inch wide fabric. We have entered those measurements into our calculator, and it gives us every detail we need to make our panels, and also what supplies we need to order for our particular size application, including the quantities of items. Into According to the calculator for our canopies, each panel will be 52 inches wide here. When you're entering your figures for your structure in a wire high canopy calculator, sometimes fudging the width will make a difference in how many panels are required for your structure. For instance, for this structure, I entered 162 inches for our width this direction. Okay. Now, if I enter 163, all of a sudden I need four panels instead of three. When I go to four panels, that will increase the cost of the hardware that I have to buy and also the amount of fabric that's required, thus costing me more money. So, sometimes by making an adjustment to the width, it will make a big difference in how much money I have to spend. With that said, that also comes into play with the width of fabric that you select. For instance, if you choose a umbrella marine grade fabric in a 46 inch width, you may have to make more panels, thus costing you more money. However, if you choose a 60 inch width, you may save a lot of money because you'll probably not need as many panels. Now, I love using two types of fabric for wire hung canopies, and that's umbrella marine grade fabric and Pfeiffer Text Plus. For this project, we're going to be using Pfeiffer Text Plus, and it's a 54 inch width fabric. And using the measurements I have, I only need three panels, so it'll save me some money. Now that our structure and calculations are done, it's time to mark and install the eyeballs. The half inch TMT that we're using needs to be cut to size. Our panel width is 15 inches. We are only going to cut one pipe at this time. The others will be cut later on. We will be using this pipe to help us mark our structure for the installation of the hardware and wire cables that needs to be installed in our pergola. The half inch EMT conduit cuts easily with a hacksaw as seen here. We will cut the other pipes later. Later on, we only need one for now. We've cut a half inch of our panels. For us, it's 52 inches. Now, we've already installed the eyes. This is a of the eyes. Because I like to use the half inch as my reference for all the eyes So, when I put it up here, what I need to do is, because I'm using an eyeball with another washer, I need to make sure that I'm not I'm not going to run into any hardware that will make it impossible for me to use a net and washer on the back end. So what I determined for us is that we want this hardware to be installed about 8 inches from the end to avoid any obstacles like this post or this post here. And that puts our pergola right here, the finished fabric, and right here. So I'll mark, which I've already done, here where this eye bolt will go. Then I'll mark here where this eye bolt goes. And obviously those would be centered between this area. Then I'd use that as a reference for all other areas. Now in between each panel from this end where the fabric stops, we want at least three inches. We don't want the panels to be any closer than approximately three inches. So from here, I'll mark three inches and then i put my pipe right there on the next row. The reason I have the three inches between each of the panels is I don't want them hitting each other when there's a strong wind. So usually at least three inches is usually a safe factor to make sure that we aren't going to have panels blowing against each other back and forth. Here are some general guidelines you may want to go over. Now it's showing installing the eye bolts. Using that pipe we cut, we will mark the beam with a pencil where we want each panel to start and where the eye bolt 
which holds the wire, should be installed. Each run of wire should be between 3 to 8 inches inside the edge of each panel, as we discussed earlier. My two sons are helping. Their names are Silas and Seth. The end of the panel should also be marked. Now, that panel's hardware location is identified on our structure. Next, we will measure over about 3 inches from the end where the first panel's edge stops. We did not show it on this run, but we will be measuring down 2 inches from the top of the beam using the soon. We will do this to make sure the hardware is horizontal in line with the top of our structure's beam. And now, we will follow the same procedure down the width of the structure for each of the panels. Be sure to start about 3 inches from the last panel's edge location. Here, we will show using a square to measure down approximately 2 inches from the top of the beam and mark every one of the eyeballs that needs to be installed with an X or a plus to indicate where we need to drill. Our structure has three panels, so we'll do this yet one more time. Then we'll the same procedure for the other side of our structure. We'll not show that. Where each eyeball should be secure, we will drill through the wood frame in 5 inches of drill pipe. Because our eyeballs have 5 inches of threaded post. We are using a high quality stainless steel eyeball with nut and washers from Sailrite. Two, you could save money and buy eyeballs that are zinc plated from a hardware store, but they do not hold up to the weather very well, they rust, and for a high working load load, they usually are rather large. Our eyeballs have a working load of about 1,000 pounds and a breaking load of 3,968 pounds. On the back side, the washer and nut that comes with our eyeball is securely tightened in place. Use a screwdriver in the eye to keep the eye vertical as the nuts tighten. Repeat this process at every location where an eyeball is used to be secured to the beam, this side and on the other. After Seth and Silas have all the eyeballs installed, next up we need to install the wire rope. Uh, this is a swedge tool to install a micropress sleeve. This is a turnbuckle that we have for each one of our canopies or panels. So what we need to do is we need to take the micropress sleeve and install it onto the end of the cable on one side, run the cable through the eye, if you're self-running then run the end of the cable through the opposite side of the micro-press Once it's through the sleeve, you leave a little bit of a tail hanging out. Now we want to close up the eye. And to do that, you want to pull on this side, not the side that held the other side of the eye. And there's no magic rule to the size of the eye, but I like to have it fairly small so it doesn't look so large. Now we'll take our swedge tool and we'll take out this one nut on the end. Tommy bar insert करने से इतने जी hole मार ले कपलर लाई तब गई। That will allow us to put the wire in between the wire and put the micropress sleeve between that other portion. What we want to do is we want to we want to create three presses on this micropress sleeve. So the first press will be very close to the end, as you can see here. Design फक्त वायर तो इसके लिए, पर बाकी जो सेकेंड डाइमेंशन में इम्पेरिकल नहीं है। तो इसलिए हम आहे का नहीं करने से भी पूर्ति सगा कराएँगे। बट हाँ इंसर्ट आई मीटर डी सी एफ आई का नहीं करने से भी we use a half inch closed wrench to do this job until I feel a little bit of pressure. And then I'll check to see where my compressed sleeve is positioned. And the other one, I'll check to see where my compressed sleeve is positioned.
सो टेन्सर कसा फॉर्म्युलाला फोर्स डिवाइड बाय एरिया फोर्स माहित आहे एफ आय एरिया माहित असतो म्हणजे एरिया तुम्ही काय केलं हा एंड पोर्शन आहे की नाही एवढा एंड पोर्शन मी तो ड्रॉ केला फर्मली एंड पोर्शन त्याचा आउटर डायमीटर कॅपिटल डी आहे इनर डायमीटर स्मॉल डी बरोबर होलचा आणि सब्जेक्टेड टू टेन्शन हे फेल झालं तर तिथं हा एरिया येणार क्रॉस सेक्शन हा क्रॉस सेक्शन एरिया लिहिला येतो पाय बाय फोर सेंट्रल पोर्शन So so notice now we this one end now one end position just about perfectly down that side, down that side. Now I can release them with just a half turn or a quarter turn and reverse out to the point where I can reposition the knife एरिया हे म्हणजे त्या होलचा डायमीटर आहे d1 एवढा एरिया माइनस केला की तुम्हाला काय म्हणते टेन्सर स्पेस मिळते आम्हाला लेट दिस हँग हियर इट्स नॉट गोइंग टू गो थ्रू देयर एंड देन आई एम गोइंग टू द अदर साइड विथ माय लॅडर एंड स्ट्रिंग दॅट अप सो वी आर गोइंग टू गो इन जस्ट एक मटीची व्हॅल्यू मी आपल्याला पाहिजे सेफ पण यायला पाहिजे अशी बघणार देन वी आर गोइंग टू दिस माइज गो थ्रू दिस लास्ट स्टेप त्याच्यानंतर लास्ट स्टेप काय राहिली की सांगतो व्हेन यू स्टार्ट स्ट्रिंगिंग दिस शेअर फेलियर ऑफ क्रेडिट नेक्स्ट ईयर हेड थ्रेडेड पोर्शन शेअर फेलियर म्हणजे काय Your <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got through that side. Now I'm back over here. Here we are. 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 Right about there, and we want to do the same thing with this one. Outer diameter D, inner diameter D. So when you do it, right there. Now we have the maximum amount for adjustment. Now we'll take our cable and we'll pull it taut. With this pulled taut, both sides, we need to figure out where we need to cut the cable. Now we don't want to cut it through over here, that would be too much cable. So we're actually going to go to the end of the eye and then basically about an inch to an inch and a half past the eye. I think I'm going to do it right about there. That's where I will create my cut so that I have plenty to tension it to make the wire taut. So right here is where I will cut. All right, I've got uh, my Dremel tool with a heavy cutting wheel on it. And this is our point where we need to cut it. I've got my safety goggles on. तुम्ही जे काही अंदाजे अंदाजे म्हणजे इम्पेरिकल रिलेशन घेतलेले डायमेन्शन कुठे कुठे आणि कसे चेक झाले सांगतो बघा हा डी वायरचा डायमीटर तुम्ही डिझाईन न कॅल्क्युलेट केला आहे डिझाईन ने कॅल्क्युलेट केला आहे बघायचं डिझाईन ने कॅल्क्युलेट केला त्यामुळे त्याचं तो सेफ आहे That cuts it very nicely. Now, if you have a heavy duty wire cutter, you can use that as well. But most people don't have a heavy duty wire cutter that will cut wire as cleanly as a Dremel tool and a cutting wheel.
दुसरे एक जर डी टू आणि डी वन एक जर डी टू डी वन आणि हा स्मॉल डी वन या तीन चेक राउंड इटसेल्फ सेफ आई कॅन सी डी टू डी वन आणि स्मॉल डी वन व्हाट आई वांट टू डू नाउ इज आई वांट टू टेक दिस into the turn buckle so, out cuz i don't want to have to be fighting all so, this uh, so i'm just going to unscrew it he let the putish at my calculation so puller ki total length so it's a now i need to make sure that it's going through and fed properly i'm going to put my tools on top of the pergola up here and my knife is just for sure and this time 10 times gap 20 times gap ke udhi length ha gap kiti paije त्याप्रमाणे तुम्ही ही लेंथ चेंज करू शकता आहे आणि तुम्ही कॅल्क्युलेशन मध्ये येत नाही आणि त्याचा फेलियरवरती काही फरक पडत नाही and before i feel it through the eye i have to put the micropress sleeve on which i forgot to do micropress sleeve आता through the eye तुम्हाला जर याच्यामध्ये काही डाउट असेल तर विचारा मी पहिले पाहिजे ओपन केले because that end was cut with a dremel tool it went through a lot easier than the other end that was cut with wire cutters this time i'm going to use the power tool and i'll show you that so let me get it set up and then i'll show you that next see how i have it positioned again now let's see how it looks with a power drill i've never done it this way this is a half inch socket ooh